Human rights groups continue to criticize China's crackdown on Muslim Uyghurs who take part in fasting and regular prayer. These and other common Muslim practices are viewed by Chinese authorities as acts of religious extremism and dissent against the state. So what do China's actions mean for Uyghurs during the holy month of Ramadan? Here with us to talk about this, we have via Skype from Washington, D.C., Sophie Richardson, China Director at Human Rights Watch, and right here in the studio, Rashan Abbas, Director of Campaign for Uyghurs. Good to have you here. Rashan, can you describe what it is like as a Muslim, as a Uyghur in China, to try and mark, mark the holy month of Ramadan? All aspects of Islam is being banned. The Chinese government made all normal activities of Islam normal practice, like just a praying, fasting, eating halal food, not eating pork, not drinking alcohol, made all of these are illegal. Under the, uh, the pretext of uh, Islamic extremism, currently they are holding three million Muslims in concentration camps. Therefore, for Uyghurs, Uyghur Muslims, it, they are not being able to fast, and it's just a survival for them, like trying to just being exist there. They are living under the uh, complete uh, Orwellian surveillance police state, being monitored 24 hours a day. Therefore, the months of the holy months of Ramadan is just a being another time of like a terror, and the uh, uh, people are afraid of just practicing normal Islam. Mm -hmm. So when you hear what those restrictions are like there, and, and they, they sound very restrictive, people online and in the diaspora are trying to do something about it in whatever way they can. And so one of those ways is something that caught our eye. It's this hashtag. This is Golnaz who tweets, this Ramadan, people must hashtag fast from China to show their support for millions of Uyghurs who are being banned by banned from celebrating Ramadan by China. The, the creator of that hashtag and that campaign sent us a video comment. Uh, her name is Hina Zubeiri, and she's a director of outreach for the Save Uyghur campaign here in D.C., and she talks to us about what's behind that. We started this campaign because three million Muslims are in concentration camps in East Turkestan under the Chinese regime. China will not let Muslims fast during the month of Ramadan, so we are fasting from China. It's super easy. We want people to not buy anything made in China and post those pictures of things that they did not buy on their social media. This campaign will continue after Ramadan until we or Muslims are free. Sophie, what do you make of measures like this? Will they have any effect at all? Oh, I think it's a brilliant idea to link together you know, these per these pervasive, pernicious restrictions on people's ability to practice their faith. And I agree with everything that, that Rushan just said, but would add to that, you know, it's not just that people aren't allowed to fast or, you know, introduce their children to their religion. The Chinese government is actually describing Islam as an ideological virus, as if you know, it was some sort of disease that had to be eradicated. And I think anything that Muslims or non-Muslims around the world can do to raise awareness, but also you know, to put some pressure on uh, governments, particularly in the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, who've actually praised China, you know, citizen activism around the world to get those governments to change their position really could make a difference in the long run. Roshan, I'm just thinking about what is happening to the Uyghurs. There have been many times during our history where we have not been particularly sophisticated and banned different faiths and religions. Uh, it seems so not of this time that this is happening to Uyghurs. But during that time, people have gone underground and still practice their faith. Is it safe for you to tell me how people are still managing to remain Muslim even under very difficult circumstances? Well, 1.1 million Han Chinese deployed to Uyghur homes to monitor their daily activities, to live with them, live in their houses. They are asking their children to spy on their family if they are practicing. Therefore, and the plus, the, every home has QR codes implanted for scanning to just monitor who's going in and out. Um, the cameras are everywhere. And when you fast during Ramadan, it's like you don't eat during the day from sunrise to sunset. But uh, when there are cameras every corner and they are offering drinks and snacks at work, at schools, it's almost impossible to fast because people are so afraid of what is happening. it's like happening. a test. If you don't eat, 
yeah. even though you're uh, your, your faith tells you that f during this holy month of Ramadan, mm. you, you abstain from fasting if you're able to. So if you don't eat, mm -hmm. then, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Right, exactly. Like serious trouble. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. So it's not possible even to, in private, be Muslim. That's yes, extraordinary. It's, all, it's almost impossible for yeah. even doing it in private. And China's getting away with this in the front of entire world mm. communities. They're labeling, sinifying Islam. How can Islam with core principles of the religion or any religion can be compatible for communist ideologies? So I one person share... we interviewed, go if ahead, I just jump in. Yeah, go ahead. One person we interviewed who had actually uh, been detained in a political re-education camp and came back out and who obviously had had to comply with restrictions on you know, observing his faith at all when he was detained said something really quite evocative to us, which was that no matter what had been done to him, that in his heart, he was always going to be faithful to his religion. And I think when you hear people who've endured that kind of treatment and yet <laughs> remain so true to their beliefs, it's really, I think, a testament of how strong this identity is and how critical you know, campaigns like Fast from Ramadan can be in educating the world about the need to show some solidarity. Yes, that's the only thing keeping Uyghur Muslims going, the faith and the hope.